Hey guys, welcome to the video today. In today's video, I'm going to review and show you how to use this OBD2 scanner by Creter. And the model number on this one is 3001. So OBD stands for Onboard Diagnostics and all cars and light trucks model year 1996 and newer that were sold in the US were required to have this port in the vehicle. So any vehicles that are 1996 or newer, you will most likely have the port on the driver's side underneath the dash. If your car or light truck was sold outside of the US, it's still possible you have this in your vehicle. Just take a look around to confirm for sure. Okay, so here's everything that was inside of the package and here's all the paperwork here and just make sure to read through all of this completely. And if you do have any questions, here's the contact information for the company that they give you so you can get a hold of them. And then here's the OBD2 scanner and the USB cable that you use to update the OBD2 scanner. And then the connector on the OBD2 scanner has a cover that we need to take off. Okay, and whenever you're working with vehicles, make sure that you're wearing the proper safety equipment and take all safety precautions. And on my 2006 Toyota Corolla, the OBD2 port is on the driver's side underneath the dash, and that's the OBD2 port there. And if you notice, it's longer on the top and shorter on the bottom with angled sides. So just make sure that you hook up the OBD2 scanner the correct way. Okay, let me hook up the OBD2 scanner now, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have the OBD2 scanner hooked up, and you do need to turn your vehicle to the on position. You don't need to start your vehicle up, but you do need to turn it to the on position so the onboard computer can communicate with the OBD2 scanner. So we'll go through each of these options here. This is the main menu, and we'll go into the diagnose option uh, last. So the DTC lookup option, this is where you can input a, a specific trouble code, and it will tell you information about that trouble code. There's a tool setup menu where you can, you know, um, change the language of the OBD2 scanner. Here are all the different languages. And then um, unit of measure, so you can change between metric and imperial. So let's back out here. And then there is a help uh, section in the main menu as well. Okay, so let's go into the diagnose option here. And right now the OBD2 scanner is communicating with the onboard computer. This might take a minute, so I'll be back when it's done. Okay, so here's the first screen that we see, and this talks about monitor status, and we'll talk more about this when we go into the I am readiness option. So let's hit OK here. Okay, so we're in the diagnostic menu, and the first option is read codes. So if we go into this option, uh, we see that I have a pending code P0420, catalyst system efficiency below threshold bank 1. And unless you're a mechanic and do this for a living, we're not going to know what that means, but this is when you would go to the internet and you would do some research to find out what this specific code means. And for each trouble code, there could be multiple reasons that you're getting that trouble code, um, you know, but this will at least give you an idea of what might be happening with your vehicle. And even if you decide not to try to repair your vehicle yourself and you decide to bring it into a mechanic, having this information is really valuable because you can talk to the mechanic about the possible problems of why you're getting this trouble code and then the possible pricing, you know, of those types of repairs. So let's back out here. The next option is erase codes, and I'm not going to go into this option because I don't want to erase that code because I haven't made the repair yet. Um, but if you do erase the code, it will uh, erase the trouble code from your onboard computer, which will turn off the check engine light. But if you haven't made the proper repair, more than likely the check engine light will just come back on. Okay, so next is the I am readiness option, and when we go into this option, this will tell us the status of the readiness monitors on our onboard computer. And I do have a video that explains this in detail, and I'll link that video at the end of this video, and if you have time, please check it out. And this is a great option to use before you go and get your vehicle emissions tested, so you can find out the status of your readiness monitors on your onboard computer. Okay, so the next option is data stream, and this option allows you to view live data on your vehicle. 
And then the next option is freeze frame. And this is a great option to look at if you do have a stored trouble code in your vehicle. This will tell you some information uh, about your vehicle that was stored at the time that the trouble code was stored. And sometimes that information will help you track down further what might be going on with your vehicle and why you're getting that trouble code. Okay, so the next option is the O2 sensor test if your vehicle is compatible with this option. Creter says that this test allows retrieval and viewing of the O2 sensor monitor test results for the most recently performed test from the vehicle's onboard computer. Okay, so the next option is onboard monitoring, and Creter says that this retrieves and displays test results for emission-related powertrain components and systems. It's a way to find out if the engine has any misfire or compression problems on a particular cylinder or other data that might indicate a problem but isn't severe enough to trigger a check engine light. Okay, the next option is EVAP system, and Creter says that certain vehicle components can be actuated by commands sent from the scanner to test their operability. Okay, and the next option is vehicle information, and this will give you information about your vehicle's VIN number and um, calibration ID and calibration verification number. Okay, so here's my opinion on the Creter 3001 OBD2 scanner. This is a nice OBD2 scanner to have, and the read codes option is great because even if you decide not to try to repair your vehicle yourself and you decide to bring it into a mechanic, you'll know the trouble code or trouble codes ahead of time, and you'll be able to talk to the mechanic about that. And you know, talk about potential reasons that you're getting that trouble code or trouble codes and then the pricing for those types of repairs. So, and another great option is the I am readiness option uh, to be able to use that before you go and get your vehicle emissions tested. And, you know, it will let you know the status of the readiness monitors in your onboard computer. And I do have a video that talks about I am readiness in more detail. And I'll link that video at the end of this video. And if you're interested and have time, please check that out. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Have a good one. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment. And if you have the time, check out these other great videos.